Part 2. Azure Moon. Harpstring Moon. The King's Triumphant Return. Following the death of Rodrigue, Dimitri begins to question his desire for revenge. His troubled mind turns to the kingdom capital and how he might end the chaos plaguing Fargus once and for all. Our victory at Drondor was certainly a turning point for us. However, Rodrigue's death has been difficult to bear. We've lost considerable military strength and resources. Unfortunately, with things as they are now, I don't think House Gatia has any resources to spare. I'm sorry. I really wish we could help. If only House Galatea had anything to give. If we split up the soldiers currently defending the monastery, we should have sufficient numbers to invade the Empire. But even then... Your Highness, you should be resting. Your wounds are still healing. I am well, I assure you. More importantly, May I have a moment of your time? Thank you. I wish to apologize to all of you. I have led you down this dark path with me and have caused so much suffering along the way. I cannot tell you how sorry I am for my behavior. There is no apology I could offer that would be sufficient. <laughs> and how do you intend to make up for my father's death? Felix, I realize words alone are not enough to repent, but I fear they are all I have. I'm not after more empty words. I want you to speak through your actions. I know that no amount of regret can ever bring back the lives we have lost. I... I know that well. It is like patching up a tear with a different material. Things can never be as they were. The best I can hope for is to make things whole again. I wish to do the right thing from now on. That is why I have made a decision. I intend to take back the Kingdom Capital. I wish to save our people. Those who I turned my back on for far too long. To follow my heart and do the right thing. That is the only way I can atone for my sins. Your Highness. <clears throat> If we can win back Ferdiat, it will give us the advantage in our war against the Empire. As one who has served the royal family for ages, know that your words bring me great joy and pride. That said, I must point out that if we make for Ferdiad, the Emperor's head will slip further out of reach. Can you live with that? I still hold hatred in my heart for her, and for the ones responsible for the tragedy. That I will carry with me until death. But my life is my own. It belongs to no one else, and it is high time that I started living for what I believe in. I will no longer allow the voices of the dead to bind me. This is something that I must do. No, something that I am choosing to do. I will accomplish my aim, even if it means risking my life to do so. Understood, Your Highness. So, any objections? You are correct. We cannot afford to die in vain by recklessly challenging the Empire. I'm worried about Lady Rhea. But if this is the choice you've made, I support it. I am at your command, Your Highness. I will follow you anywhere. My sword is at your service, Your Highness. I'll help too. The people in Ferdiad need us. Fine. I'll help you. In my father's stead. But in return, you must win. You know that, don't you, Dimitri? I do. And I swear on my father's lance that we will prevail. Then it is decided. It seems this war council has much to discuss. Our next stop is Ferdiad, the kingdom capital. For the future of Fargus.
I've set my sights higher. Easy. Oh, what a relief! I passed? I passed, as expected. Success. Despite their victory at the Battle of Grander, the Kingdom Army turns around and marches for Ferdiad instead of heading south. To hail the arrival of the Kingdom Army, the people of Ferdiad begin to rebel. No move is made to suppress them. Instead, Cornelia directs her borrowed Imperial troops to prevent Dimitri from reaching the Kingdom capital. Ferdiad, it has been a lifetime since I was here last. Five years ago, in fact. On the day before my execution, when Dadu helped me escape from prison, I killed soldiers from my homeland, stole weapons from their corpses, and made my escape soaked in their blood. To think this is how I would return to the city of my birth after all that has happened. Yes. Rodrigue gave his life to show me the way back to this path. You have risked much as well. I am glad to have you at my side. From the bottom of my heart, I am forever grateful. Let's win this, Professor. Let's all make it out alive and celebrate our victory. Your Highness, the path to the castle has been cleared. We are making preparations to advance. Say the word, and we march. Yes. Let us begin. Everyone, listen well. This battle is for all that the Empire stole from us. It is a fight to reclaim the days of peace we once enjoyed. I give you but two commands. Stay alive 
and follow your heart. That is all I ask. The gates to the Kingdom Capital are open. Join me! It is time to take back our home! I thought I would see you again, little princeling. <laughs> so stubborn. It must run in your family. Cornelia, the city is overrun with insurrection. It seems to be in response to our enemy's arrival. If we do nothing, our army may suffer damages. We should suppress the citizens immediately. The people are rebelling? <laughs> Let them do as they please. Or are you saying you have enough soldiers to divide our forces? Quite bold of you, with our enemy's most elite soldiers at our doorstep. But... what are you suggesting? The city is going to be a battlefield anyway. Kill all who oppose us, even if they are members of the general populace. Go on now. You are needed out there. As you wish. May we find fortune in the battle to come. Huh. What an inconvenience the little princeling has turned out to be. And bringing that troublesome person along with him. It would have been much better if he and his sweet little stepsister had been good little children and just killed each other.
preparations are all in place. Time to meet my old master. Ready the Titanists in the streets. Let's give them a welcome to remember. Advance! Smash that traitor Cornelia and reclaim the cap! I will not lose. I swear it by the blood in my veins. Let's clean up. At your service. What's the plan? I'd be honored. I'll cut through. strategy. Another victory. Leave it to me. Ready when you are. I'll do my best. More fighting. does pay off in the end. Ah. <laughs> 
to slow down. You must. Great work. numbers.
keep our guard up. Tightness enough for you? Well then, we had better activate the Viscum. Things are surprisingly tough. Are they being reinforced by magic? If there is magic in use, we should find the source and eliminate it. Just be careful. You knew the odds. I need to pull my weight. Good to fight for our cause. I'd be honored. I must steal myself.
Turn the table. Leave it to me. I'll cut through. as strong as I can. Let's clean up. That should stop the supply of magic. Now we should be able to land attacks on those things. 
These strange devices and weapons. They are the Empire's? Unbelievable. What's the plan? Burn until we meet again. At your service. to slow down. Ready when you are. I'm here to help. Witness my resolve! strategy. Yeah. 
ineffective. Nobody's fool. I'd be honored.
still here. Must continue my training. My stage now. I could learn from that. Thank you. Now to apply this knowledge. Let's get 
things rolling. Another victory.
You haven't earned my pity. Not quite. Too slow. I'll end this quickly. I shall not stray.
train harder.
I can't quite say that I'm pleased to meet you, though I do know quite a lot about you. It would be nice if we could catch up a little, but I'm afraid it's time for you to die. long time, hasn't it, your highness? You've grown awfully strong. How oh, shameless. I bet it was you who killed my uncle and set me up. Am I right? Oh, too true. I'd already forgotten about all that loveliness. I'll kill you, you monster. You will pay for all that you have done. So this is as far as I could get. With this strength, I can protect them all. <laughs> well, so be it. Still, I'll give you a little gift. 
It's over, Cornelia. If you have any last words, now is the time. <laughs> right you are. <laughs> Very well. I have an old tale that I would like you to hear, if I may. About something that happened ten years ago. Something Patricia said about how she wished to see her real daughter again, no matter who or what she had to sacrifice to do so. And about how I made her wish come true, at the cost of the King's head. The King's head? You mean Dusker? You monster! You mean to say that my father, everyone, was killed by my stepmother? That's right. Her family meant everything to her. You certainly know that feeling, do you not? <laughs> oh, poor little prince. Unloved by the only mother he ever knew. <laughs> How pitiful. How dare you! <laughs> There's nothing left for you now. Nothing but despair. Try as that woman might to spout nonsense to her very last, nothing could change the fact that she was an enemy of the kingdom. She sold out Fargus to the Empire, forcing our people to suffer their tyranny. But all that ends today. No more blood will be needlessly spilled. Now that Cornelia has fallen, we will exert pressure on the nobles who were aligned with her. Perhaps we may yet find a connection to the tragic incident in Dusker. Once we do that, we will finally be able to prove the innocence of its people. Your Highness. I am certain that would make those of Dusker who lost their lives that day very happy. I am grateful, and I am proud to serve a man such as you. Come, Your Highness. You still have some responsibilities that must be carried out. Your people have been patiently awaiting your return. Do you mean... no. I can't bear to face them after all that I... Professor, right you are, as ever. I am their king, after all. What... what is this? As you can see, the people are rejoicing at the return of their king. Even though I turned my back on them and fled the kingdom in disgrace. Even so, the spectacle before you does not lie. We are a kingdom in need of a king, a hero to save the people from their long oppression. Your Highness, it is truly a blessing that you have returned. Do I really have the right to stand here? Will they accept me as their king? Bloodstained as I am, am I fit to be king? These are happy tears, my friend. I am finally home again. Fargus, how I missed you. It may be spring, but the nights are quite chilly here in Ferdiad. Still, our celebratory feast shows no sign of stopping. Have you grown weary of the festivities? It's not that I have grown weary, more that I find it difficult to be around everyone at the moment. I have just returned from visiting the graves of my loved ones. It had been a long while since I left flowers. I was always terribly afraid of going near there, but I could not stay away forever. You have taught me something important, Professor. That too, of course. But what I'm referring to is far more valuable. How should I put this? 
Perhaps it is most accurate to say that you taught me how to live. If you and I had not reunited on that fateful day, I am certain I would have died a fruitless death on the battlefield. I would have foolishly challenged a horde of foes, and in doing so, needlessly sacrificed the lives of my friends and myself. But now I have returned to my rightful place. I struggle with what to say when I know well that words are not enough to express my gratitude. You saved me from the darkness, and guided me back to the light. Thank you, Professor. With all that I am, I thank you. That is a hard question to answer. I still do not believe I deserve happiness. These hands of mine have taken so many lives. Nobles and commoners, adults and children. Perhaps a day will come when I have finally atoned for my sins. But such a day is not possible until after the war is over. But I digress. For tonight, our only focus should be to bask in our victory. After that, we must prepare for our battle with the Empire. To start, we must absorb the Kingdom Knights taken by the Dukedom into our own forces and reshuffle our troops. The Lords will need to help purge our territory of Imperial forces, and I will use my authority as King to gather forces from various regions. And we'll have to ask the merchants to lend us the funds we require. Oh, and we must request delivery of supplies at once. <laughs> Just thinking about it all makes my head spin. There is much to do, but it is all critical work if we hope to stand a chance against the Empire. Yes, I am well aware. I believe we have spoken of this before. Everyone has something they simply cannot accept. As for Edelgard, I am certain she will never be able to accept the Church of Seros. I believe that is why she seeks to destroy it. She is looking to revolutionize the world, in her mind, for the better. But even if she manages to birth a new world, it would be at the cost of... <sighs> I wish to end this war through acceptance, not annihilation. Just as my people accepted me, I wish dearly to accept her. But I fear... Your Highness! I finally found you. Ah, I'm sorry for slipping away. Has something happened? An express messenger just arrived from the leader of the Alliance. Please, return to the castle at once. An express messenger? What in the world could Claude be after? I am on my way. Professor, please join me. <laughs> 